Hello there guys, my name is Mr. Yorkies World, and in today's video I'm going to be covering the settings that I use in the new P3D version 5. Um, just for your information, I am also using Hotfix number 1. Uh, I installed the simulator and literally 24 hours later realised that the Hotfix had been released. So uh, I went ahead and uh, downloaded that and installed it. So it's all up to date. I'm using the latest version of V5 with the Hotfix number 1, which at the time of recording this video is correct. Um, or is the latest version. It's been a while since I last made a settings video. Um, I've had a little while to sort of test out things in the sim uh, in terms of performance and have a little play with it. And I'm happy to report there has definitely been a noticeable increase in uh, frames per second and smoothness in version 5 compared to what I saw uh, in version 4 under the same settings, basically. Um, now, with the settings I'm going to show you today, I've been able to get about 60 FPS in an external vehicle view and between 50 and 60 FPS inside the virtual cockpit, uh, obviously depending on the aircraft, on the scenery that I'm using, uh, weather and things like that, which overall I've, I have found V5 to be very, very impressive in terms of that performance boost. Uh, not everybody is the same, but for me, I have. Now, before we get into this video, just as a side note, uh, my system is using Windows 10, 64-bit. Uh, I've got an Intel Core i9-9900K uh, running at stock speed. I'm using the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti, which has 11 gigabytes of uh, video RAM. And my system has now got 32 gigabytes of system memory as well. I've recently upgraded from 16 gigabytes to 32. Uh, the settings I'm going to show you might work fine with a lower end system as well. Uh, mine's sort of towards the higher end, but obviously uh, it might well work. These settings might well work for any system. It's just a case of literally uh, finding the best uh, settings for you. So what works for one person might not work for another. Now, in terms of the actual settings that I've used in P3D, uh, they haven't really changed a lot, to be honest, since P3D version 4.5. Uh, there have been a few subtle differences in, f in version 5 that I'll get into in just a second. Um, so, for example, if we go into the traffic page, uh, everything has stayed the same, so I've got it all off. Uh, this is literally just my own preference. Uh, I use an add-on called Ultimate Traffic Live to generate and control my traffic inside the simulator. So I actually don't need any of the uh, in-sim sliders to be set for that to work. Uh, whereas if we go on sort of like other pages that I'm going to go on to in a minute, you will see differences. So that pretty much wraps it up for, the, for that particular page, the traffic page. Let's move on now uh, to the display page where you can see I'm using a custom preset uh, and I've actually called that regular settings, which is the same as what I did in P P3D version 4 and 4.5. Uh, I usually create different presets based on what sort of flight I'm going to be doing and what sort of uh, complexity I'm dealing with in terms of scenery, etc. Uh, again, it's all about tweaking whatever works best for your system. Uh, but this particular preset works perfectly fine overall for everything, to be fair. Um, it doesn't really need tweaking that much. So if we get into it then, so under the image and texture quality section, you can see I'm using uh, FXAA, I've got 8x MSAA, and I'm using 8x texture filtering as well, uh, and I've also got my texture resolution set to 4K. Uh, I do not use dynamic texture streaming. Um, this is something that I've read about and I've not really tested, but according to what I've read, it can reduce... Uh, performance slightly. Basically what it does is it reduces the texture resolutions of um, textures that are in like the far distance uh, until you get closer and then it come, uh, obviously changes them to higher textures. But um, for me I've just I've turned that off because I've never used anything like that. It's, I've always been fine. Um, so I've, I've turned it off. I've heard it can cause performance issues so I've turned it off. Uh, moving to the right hand side at the top we can see I'm using a GTX 1080 Ti which is what I mentioned earlier, at 1080p. Uh, I don't have blackout de desktop textures, or blackout desktop enabled, should I say, uh, because I've got two monitors. So if I wanted to use uh, EFB on my second monitor or, or read a, a spreadsheet or anything like that, or like a, uh, not a spreadsheet, uh, a checklist, sorry, I wouldn't be able to do that if that option was selected, basically, because that monitor would be completely black. So that's why I've got that disabled. Uh, I've got autofill main window ticked. That's just literally so it autofills the main window. 
And uh, if we move down to the lower section there, we can see under the view and panel settings, I'm using VSync with triple buffering and a target frame rate of unlimited. Now that has been the same for a long time. I've always used that combination always seems to be nice and smooth, always seems to work perfectly for me. Again, it might be different for yourself, but for me, it works absolutely fantastic. Now, I've also disabled variable refresh rate, and uh, I've chosen to have MipMap virtual cockpit panels enabled. Um, I don't think there was a variable refresh rate option in previous versions, but I know the MipMap virtual cockpit panels was, and uh, that's basically stayed the same. It, it, the virtual cockpit uh, MIP mapping basically means it increases the uh, sort of resolution and quality of the uh, panels inside your, your, your uh, virtual cockpit. So it's pretty self-explanatory. You definitely want that to be enabled. Now, moving on to another important section of the settings, which is the world section. You can see starting from the top left, uh, I've got my level of detail set to ultra. Uh, I don't really have any issues with that. Again, if you have issues with that, I would recommend toning that down. But for me, it works absolutely perfectly fine. I've got tessellation factor set to high. And as you can see, I've got a mes mesh resolution of 10 meters and a texture resolution of 1 meter. Again, that's pretty much the same as what I've used in the past. I don't use high resolution terrain textures because this has been known to cause issues uh, with FPS and induce stutters in previous sim versions so i've not actually tested that just to be safe in version 5 i've not tested it yet um i've just left it as it is now if we look at the water and bathmetry section you can see i've got my water detail set to medium i'm not really bothered about looking at the water as long as the scenery and the aircraft look good in the simulator um that's all i'm bothered about again that's one of the main reasons i've not got bathmetry um sort of enabled either because again it's all to do with water and it doesn't really interest me um, in terms of reflections you can see I've only got the user vehicle selected this is down to personal preference you might want to look at that and tweak it and see what works best for you uh, special effects now you can see I've got both the detail and the distance set to just medium I don't really pay much attention to special effects. I like to concentrate on flying the plane. It's the same with the water. Uh, it's not really that important to me. Now, when we go back to the top right hand side now, we can see that under the scenery and objects or scenery objects, I've got the scenery complexity set to normal. This is mainly uh, because I don't really see much point in having an immense amount of scenery uh, for most of my flights. I, I, can get par I can get by with just normal and it works perfectly fine. That's no problem. Uh, as long as the basics are there, it looks pretty nice as it is. Um, even in VFR, normal looks pretty acceptable, to be fair. I, I, I would say it looks pretty acceptable. Um, so my auto gen and scenery draw distance is set to high. Uh, I don't like to see much popping in in the simulator and I don't actually recognize uh, when I'm using high that there is much popping in at all. It works perfectly fine on my system. Again, uh, your system is different or it probably will be. Uh, so you might want to tweak that just to make sure that it, uh, it works best for you. Uh, now, when it comes to auto gen vegetation density, I've only got that set to sparse. Uh, and I've used this same setting for quite some time. Uh, that's because I don't really notice much of a difference um, in terms of any sort of higher settings when it comes to trees. They all sort of just look the same to me. A tree is a tree. When when I'm looking out the window of the aircraft, I'm looking around for the runway to land, uh, or I'm looking for, you know, just, just generally nice scenery. I'm not too bothered about trees on their own, to be fair. Um, auto gem building density is set to normal. Again, I find that that gives you like an, a nice balance and it looks really nice as it is. I don't, I don't feel the need to increase it any further. Uh, you might want to. Some people do. They want to see like loads and loads of scenery uh, and, and auto-gen buildings. But for me, I don't really need to. It costs a lot of performance in some cases. Uh, it's entirely up to yourself. Now, moving on to 3D auto-gen vegetation or dynamic 3D auto-gen vegetation. I've got that disabled. Uh, for me... And I know I mentioned that I don't really bother about trees, but the trees that you do see when that is enabled seem to be like a weird light green colour and, and they stand out just like a, store, like a sore thumb. Uh, I don't like it. I really don't like it at all. Moving on to weather now, as at the moment, you can probably see that I've got it set basically the standard settings and that's because Active Sky at the time of making this video, uh, which is Monday the 4th of uh, May, 
2020. Active Sky isn't available at the moment for P3D version 5. But uh, nevertheless, you can see that that's what I've got it set to. I would normally have the draw distance set to 90 miles and the cloud coverage density set to high, uh, but I've not got around to changing that yet. Now, I've gone ahead and got uh, volumetric fog, uh, windshield effects and turbulence and also thermal effects enabled. I, uh, I don't use thermal visualizations. The rate at which the weather changes is currently set to medium, but I think that's default, to be fair. I haven't changed it. Uh, again, I'll probably get around to tweaking that when an update for Active Sky comes out, so I can start using that, and, and I'll probably use that um, depending on uh, what Active Sky recommends for those settings. So I haven't actually bothered to enable the new enhanced atmospherics, and it's a beta, uh, simply because I'd rather stick with what I know for now. I've, I've definitely um, got like a stable sort of setup at the moment. I will be doing a video in the future outlining what that does and, and what it looks like compared to the default, but for now, I'll just leave it as it is. Um, and finally, we move on to lighting. Uh, this is the final section. You can see that I'm not using HDR, and now this is mainly because I personally like the way that the sim looks without it. Uh, HDR, for, for me anyway, um, makes things look a little bit dark, uh, or too dark, and sort of unrealistic, but again, that's just my opinion. I've got dynamic reflections set to ultra with uh, dynamic lighting, landing lights, illuminate the ground, and display lens flare uh, enabled. I think they're all pretty self-explanatory. Shadows, I've got the quality and the draw distance set to medium. Again, for me, that, that works pretty well. and looks pretty nice. And you can see I've got the various different types of shadows enabled for casting and receiving uh, here as well. Again, these are my own preference, and they will affect uh, performance as well. So you might want to have a bit of a tweak uh, around to see what works best for you when it comes to that. So basically, that is it. They are my settings, or those are my settings, for P3D version 5 with Hotfix 1. Uh, you might want to check and just sort of tweak yours um, in the simulator if you're using the same sort of setup as mine. It might be pretty similar, but every system is different. So I personally would have a bit of a tweak. Uh, don't go changing anything in the uh, config just yet. Um, start off by tweaking things with the sliders because you'll probably get better results. Thank you very much for watching. Leave me a like if you like this video, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.